Hey folks, welcome back to Skyward Sword. We are here in the fourth dungeon, the Ancient Cistern, and we are down in the Underworld. The Underworld is the second portion of the dungeon, uh, where we go down uh, into the Realm of Purple, fight a bunch of zombie Bakoblins, and uh, basically do a bunch of cool stuff. This is a really cool area. You see there's uh, demonic imagery everywhere. And, and death, and, and for some reason zombie bakoblins are actually more durable than normal ones. I, I have no idea why. I mean, they're like decaying and all that. You, you'd think that they would be able to be destroyed easier, but who knows. On the flip side, they are very slow, uh, and they are unarmed, and they're, they should never cause you any sort of difficulty, basically. Like, ever. I, I don't think I've ever taken a hit from them. Uh, watch me take a hit from them. Uh, like later in this video. Probably. Ooh, avoid that, uh, that, that, that fluid that is a shade of maroon. I'm not sure I want to know what that is. Anyway, got, uh, keys down here. Basically, as I said in the last video, uh, there's a juxtaposition between heaven and hell, like uh, Nirvana and Endless Torment or, or something along those lines. Yet for some reason there are still goddess butterflies down in hell. I I'm not sure I understand. Okay, and now, time time to make up for my failure in the last episode. You remember the last episode I tried to draw a Triforce and the game did not have any of that sass. Um but now, today, I will make up for it. Watch this. Watch my amazing artistic... This is a worse Triforce than the last one, isn't it? Oh, that's awful. But it is accepted for some reason. And so we can catch these fairies. Basically the most useful thing I could get at this point, since uh, I'm not really starved for ammunition on anything, and there is a source of infinite bombs right here. Anyway, a solution to the puzzle was just given to us. There is a thing hidden in the eye, and that means that it's time for Mr. Bug. Once I, once I do this. Well, now I'm really wondering what that that maroon fluid is. If, if lily pads can, can apparently survive in it. I don't know. It, it, it's meant to resemble blood, I'm pretty sure, clearly, but... I don't think it's actually blood. What do you think it is, viewer? Give me your most comical explanation. Anyway, now we can grab this bomb with Mr. Bug and transport it into its uh, next destination. Unfortunately, uh, upgrade that Mr. Bug cannot dash while holding anything, um, but still very nice to uh, have the added day uh, added uh, stamina from from that one upgrade. I'm sure it's possible without, but you have more room for messing around if you so desire. Anyway, grab that bomb, drop it over Hizzle, and ta-da! We now have a platform to get over there. I love that Mr. Bug gets so much use in throughout the entire game. Like, this isn't even... A, a Laneru area where the Mr. Bug was created, and it's technically a forest area where we got Mr. Bug, but Mr. Bug just stays relevant throughout the entire game. Kind of like the Rolling Stones. Anyway, sometimes Link doesn't like to grab things. I, I'm, it's, it's unfortunate. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of how flat is the surface you're approaching at the time. Uh, but since you don't take any fall of damage, I can't fault it too much. Anyway, super rotation. That rotation is too fast for us to outrun. Uh, if we attempted to run there, we would be able to get back to where we were, but we wouldn't make any progress. Something about centripetal force, and I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a physicsologist, so... Anyway, we want to reverse the direction using the switch. And uh, please note that when you are whipping, uh, you want to swing the Wiimote in the direction that you wish to whip. Otherwise, just things will not work out for you. Uh, 
And again with the zombie Bakamons, I'm I love the idea of the zombie Bakamons, but they pose zero threat. They do nothing compared to like normal Bakamons. Like normal Bakamons, pain in the ass, hate them. They're total jerks. Zombie Bakamons, pretty awesome, but not dangerous. If they like spew acid at you or, or turned you into a zombie and then you would be stuck the rest of the game and this no, that would be terrible. Um, but yeah, like poison you or something, I don't know. Anywho, reverse the direction once again. Uh, may not be immediately obvious, but it reverses the direction of all the drums, not just the, the one directly under it. So that allows us to move on over to another locale over here. And as you can see, very nice little set piece uh, for going back up to the surface. Or not so much the surface, but the the heaven of sorts. Actually, that is an interesting uh, idea that this is beyond the surface. This is deeper than the surface. This we start in the sky and then we go all the way down. Except I'm sure there's absolutely no symbolism in that. Anywho, we are being chased by zombie Bakuman, so this is not good. Get away! Get away! Get away! It's meant to be an intense chase, but if you just uh, continuously hold up and then shake off the Bakuman's if they ever get to you, which I think one or two will. Um, then no trouble whatsoever. Yeah, one or two. It's an awesome set piece. Not too challenging. I'll accept it. And rise back up, and we are over here. And look, the dungeon knows exactly how it, it is solved. How it itself is solved. I... I don't know, it kind of breaks the immersion for you when the dungeon knows what you are doing. And it has left rocks inscribed with instructions on how to solve a dungeon. I mean, this is like a religious place. This is somewhere you would, like, go for Buddhist meditation or something. It's not even supposed to be a place to be solved. It's, it's, when a dungeon knows it's a dungeon, that's when it bugs me. That's part of why I really like uh, dungeons in Ocarina of Time, because, I mean, they're, they're temples, and they're very obviously temples that have been dilapidated into the form you see that day. Here, it is pretty clearly constructed as a dungeon. But anyway, that all goes around, and we got the blessed idol. This is the boss key. And see, it's, it's a statue thing. It's totally Buddha. Anyway, this is awesome, but again, not threatening. I imagine that they had in mind some sort of intense chase where you were like swarmed with zombie Bakoblins and you had to fight to get out before the thing smushed you with its butt. Um, but you can just dash and it's, yeah. Not quite as tense, but it's so cool. It is so cool to, to smash zombie Bakoblins with a, a Bootyus Maximus of sorts. Anyway, now that we have the boss key, we can head to the top of this statue. Insert and have some fun. And this is definitely one of the easier uh, puzzles here, because you know which way is up. So it's very, very easy to see which side should be facing you when you're going to push it in. Anywho, that opens up. And opens up even higher. That is heaven. Everything is heaven. Everything is heaven and hell. It's all symbolism. Yeah, one last trial is to uh, activate all these things. All the things. And that will send us up even, even, even higher. Now we're totally going to heaven, dude. Like, don't you get it, man? This is symbolic and, and, and Buddhist and Zen and all those things. And also a giraffe, apparently. Why is it a giraffe? 
Stop it, it's creepy. But yeah, grab some hearts if you so desire. I need not such trivialities. And save if you so desire and head to the boss. Oh, look who it is. Nah, it looks to me like you're just posing. I choose to believe that this is a reference to the trial and death of Socrates. I am correct. You cannot argue against me. Welcome to my favorite boss fight of the game. This in, this fight is intense. It's so cool. You gotta dodge throwing axes and, and, and slash appropriately. And the best part is coming up. Basically, um, his arms need to be destroyed using the whip. And unfortunately, it is kind of a situation in which you have to wait for him to do a certain thing before you can harm him. But he will do that, slap the ground, and then you can dislodge his joints. Then once you've dislodged those two, he will pose a little bit, and then expose his weak point there. But uh, much like the Gooper Blooper, or whatever his name was, in uh, Mario Sunshine. It's not a good idea to approach until you've destroyed all his arms, because uh, he can swat you away, and that's not good. That's not fun. Anyway, attack his weak point for some massive damage, and he will reform and rinse and repeat. Because, you know, the, you got to do it at least, like, two or three times, because that's just how bosses work. Yeah, my, my complaint with this boss, because I'm forced to complain about anything and everything, uh, is that it, it is an, an instance of you have to wait for him to do things, and sometimes he just likes posing. But on the other hand, it is incredibly badass. I, I, I love, like, it's an automaton powered by evil or something, I don't even know. But it's a really cool design. Like, it manages to be futuristic, but at the same time, really fitting with the theme of the dungeon. Anyway, let's slash the hell out of him a bit. Just a little bit. And then, once you've gone through that... He turns into Shiva. With legs. Look at how cool this is. You don't even understand how cool this is. Anyway, now he will slash you with, like, three arms at once. And once you've, like, dislodged his arms, you can use his swords to attack him. It's an idea that uh, was kind of prevalent in Wind Waker, um, but not so much in later Zelda's. But using his swords, you can just straight up chop off his limbs, for one thing. Um, and then also destroy the grate guarding his weak point. Oh, and, 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 and he cut off his legs too, that's important. And you have, you have to play this to understand just how much of a badass you feel like when you're wielding that sword. There's so much weight behind it, it's just like... Ugh. So cool, so good. So satisfying too. This guy actually can be pretty tricky, um, his swords tend to move pretty quickly, and if you're not dodging properly, his axes can get you, uh, and also he somebody's, some of the Pokemon, so we don't really care about the Pokemon. 
I think that, yeah, they're even weaker than normal zombie goblins, so whatever. Anyway, good idea is to uh, try to take care of uh, one side of his body, um, but really, once you have access to a sword, uh, you can just take advantage of some idle animation and just get rid of all his limbs. Once you have a sword, it's over, basically. I mean, hell, he's not even attacking me. And once more, with feeling. I love that ghosting effect they have with the swords. Like, it's not really used elsewhere. Oh, by the way, you can destroy pillars and there's hearts in them. If you ever have a Zelda boss fight with pillars, there are hearts in them, just in case you were not aware. And you can destroy them with his swords if you are wielding it. Yeah, look at that, all of them, three at once. Too easy, just as I thought. There we go. And yeah, that was me being a little hasty. There, there's no harm in, uh, in in being patient here. He, it's not like he's going to reform during the middle of his attack animation. So you can basically grab one and, and come along when he's ready. That was a little creepy. And once again, we are rewarded with a heart container. Is, is this a surprise to anyone? Really? Guys, 25 years of this. That's a Triforce up there. Yeah, there are Triforces on the walls now. Interesting. And we will do that next time, so I'll see you guys next time.